everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio and today I'm sharing with you my Pick a Stick Challenge art journal page for the month of August 2018. Um, you saw the steps starting at the, the beginning of the video. When I looked at those, I said to myself, wow, it's Christmas in August. <laughs> Look at those colors, red and green. Yeah, but uh, I didn't end up being like that at all. Um, I looked at the other other prompts and I thought to myself that um, one of the prompts was fish and I thought oh well I can draw a man fishing off a fishing boat and the reason that I thought of that was because I recently saw some fishing boats um, watched some fishermen for the first time ever um, I mean I've seen a boat before but I hadn't really thought about how fish occur <laughs> how they get you know, in and how they, how they're caught. Um, I know sometimes fish are caught by line and sometimes they're caught by net. And technically this boat maybe looks more like the kind that would have nets, but I wanted um, him to have a, a fishing line. So I made a quick drawing. You know, this isn't, this isn't for the, you know, the museum. I mean, this is just an art journal page messing around. And the first step of our um, single word steps that we have each month drawn randomly on sticks. We just draw these randomly. It's very random and that's how come you know you end up with red and green in August. Um, the first step was watercolor and so I got out my uh, Sakura Koi watercolor travel set. I'm just watercoloring in my scene. Um, I have some mountainous trees in the background and some hills and some sky and some sea or maybe it's maybe it's a, a bay. I don't know. But, um, you know, these guys are out there. They're fishing and it's in the nature. Um, nothing else around them. It's a pretty solitary thing, I think, just to, well, I guess there's usually probably more than one guy. There's the boats that I saw, there was two guys on them. Um, but I don't know, you're out there in the nature, fishing the fish, don't know what you're going to get, don't know if it's going to be a good day or a bad day, you just never know. So I'm water, just watercoloring, and this is not, this is not good watercolor paper, it's not absorbing the water at all, and, um, I think this book has watercolor paper in it, so I'm guessing that because the other side of the page has acrylic on it that it's like trapped and it just it's not absorbent at all so I'm getting a very uh, uh, not very satisfactory watercolor I try wet and wet I try uh, dry you know dry brushing um, yeah it's not looking too great but hey I'm getting some color on there speaking of colors I've got the color green um, in kind of three different shades so I've got that prompt covered and then I'm gonna put some burgundy on the boat to cover that color and then I'll have my two colors on the page which is an optional part of the challenge you don't have to use the colors if you don't want to but that's my favorite part of the challenge I always like to try to use the colors that are randomly chosen for me uh, sometimes the colors that are randomly chosen are a real challenge. This month, I didn't find this one a challenge at all. <laughs> In fact, I was kind of wishing that I had a little bit more of a challenge, but you know, that's just me. I, I like I like to be pushed outside of my box. And um, that's what I use these challenges for, is to really, to really push myself. And this one was, pretty much right in my comfort zone, right in my wheelhouse. Um, yeah, but you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit, right? That's how Pick a Stick Challenge works. You get your prompts and you do them in order, the first six in order. You use the colors and the other wild cards if you want, and that's how it goes. So there's not much um, to complain about, really. So now I'm just kind of going over with a second color of water a second layer of watercolor um, to add in some some tree texture. Uh, this big mountain in the background is pretty barren. It doesn't have a lot on it, but the, the lower ones in the foreground have a lot of 
probably evergreen type trees. So I'm just dabbing with my brush to get that kind of tree texture. I went swish swish the long way back and back and forth on the the sea and the sky to give you know those textures so it's it's giving a little bit of visual interest but this isn't a masterpiece it's just uh what i felt like painting this day so and how i felt like painting i could have spent a lot more time on it and tried to you know really do something with the watercolor but i just wasn't in the mood really i got other things to do today and I just didn't feel like it. So there's my burgundy. It looks kind of like red in this case. Um, I did mix it with a little bit of brown to make it into a darker red, but it's looking pretty bright. But I don't really care because that's the kind of color that you would see on a fishing boat. A lot of them have red or blue. Um, they've got boxes on them and, and nets and just stuff. And the fishing guys that I saw were wearing... Um, kind of like coveralls, like yellow rubber pants that came all the way up to their chest with suspenders. And then um, I put I put a hat on my guy, although I didn't see anyone with hats actually. Mostly just the rubber boots and the, the um, waterproof overalls that were bright, bright yellow. So I added that color in. And this, this boat has kind of a tower that a guy would be inside there driving and then um, seeing through that window and then the other guy would be working the nets or the lines or whatever. I'm sure when they anchor the boat to really fish, oh, excuse me, <laughs> then they probably both come out and do the work, you know. I didn't see him actually out in the water. I just saw him when they came back in to the bay and unloaded the fish. They had crates bright colored plastic crates. So I tried to put some bright colored plastic crates on my boat. So step two is try. And I took that to be try something new that you've never tried before. And I have this brand new dip pen set um, and some India ink that's brand new. I've noticed lately that like in Inktober and stuff, a lot of people use dip pens and India ink to draw. And I never do. I have illustration pens um, that are in the India ink, but they're, you know, marker type pens. They're not dip pens. And so I decided to try my new dip pens. And it comes with two handles and a bunch of different nibs. I did end up trying two of the nibs. Um, I tried the other one later, which I thought would maybe give me a fatter line. This one is really very thin very thin fine line um, like maybe a size small marker so I'm using it to draw in my illustration lines I will have to mess around some more and figure out if any of these make a fatter line because the other one that I picked to do the writing at the end it's not really that it's not fatter either so um, I just have to experiment maybe it's pressure maybe pressing hard you know har harder on it splits the little tip, the little nib splits open and makes a bigger line. That might be how you do it, but this is my first time to try it. So I'm just using it to um, draw in my lines of my drawing, um, which is what I would do with a marker instead. Uh, it's just, it's fun though. You just, uh, the, the ink is very dark. It's very opaque. So you don't have to fuss around with going over lines. You just dip it when it runs out of ink and then you just go over one time until it runs out of ink, you dip it again. It's pretty cool and it, it dried quickly. And so I'll probably continue to use it. I thought it was fun and it was inexpensive. So I got it off an of Amazon and, and I will put a link to this pen and the India ink bottle. Uh, in the description box below as well as you know the links to the watercolors and whatever else I used I don't even remember <laughs> so um, I wanted to brighten back up some of the whites that had gotten a little bit messy when I was watercoloring I had a too big of a brush and so I got out my white Posca pen and that is an opaque acrylic marker so I can go over 
other colors and bring them back to white. So I kind of rounded back up my little, um, I don't know what those round things are on the front of the boat. I'm, I'm thinking there's some type of tires and maybe they're used for bumping into things. I'm not sure. But anyway, whatever they are, I whited them back up <laughs> because the picture that I took had white ones on it. They're probably painted. So the next step, step three, was carve. And I took that to mean that I needed to carve a stamp. Um, you could carve any number of things, but I decided to make a quirky carved fish stamp. Um, quirky is step five. So I figured I could put those together. Step six is, six is nature, and I already had that one. So this was just um, pretty darn simple. I didn't, it, it might seem like I planned it that way, but I really didn't. I just saw the word fish and I thought, oh, I'll make a fishing boat because of my re recent experience. And then everything else just completely fell into place. It was such an easy challenge this time. So for stamp carving, this is a speedball product called Easy Carve. And I will link it in the description box below. You can also use uh, erasers, you know, like a pencil eraser. Um, before I've purchased a large one that's that's at the dollar store for a dollar that says four big mistakes and it's a large eraser and I just carve that but this stuff is really 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 buttery soft and easy to carve the tools that I have are also from speedball and the tips store inside the handle so you don't lose them I kind of wish that my new dip pin had the same thing where you could put the tips inside because I'm just I'm afraid I'm going to lose the tips so um it would have been nice to have that feature on my new dip pin too um so I'm using an exacto knife and kind of really cutting close to the lines and then I have a carving tool and I zoomed in so that you could see the process and then I didn't keep myself on the screen very well so I'm sorry about that I, I wasn't paying attention to where my hands were on the screen after I zoomed it makes it a little bit more difficult. But I use a you use really only one tip this time. Oftentimes I use more than one, but this time I just use this deep groove tip because I decided to, decided to make a solid stamp. If you wanted to carve out the inside and make a line stamp, that would take longer, but you would use a smaller there's like a smaller little groove tool that you could use to carve out everything on the inside. Um, I didn't end up making the stamp this way. And that's something that you need to choose before you start carving. <laughs> and if you get confused, you can take the pencil and color in the parts that you want to carve out. And that kind of helps to guide you um, as you're stamp carving. But I just made a, a solid stamp with some lines on it. So pretty simple. Um, this, I saw something like this fish on Pinterest. It's just like a silly, uh, quirky fish. And I wanted to make sure that it was much larger than the man in the boat so that I could make it more funny and quirky because, oh, here's this giant fish and this guy's going to try to land it, you know, that type of a situation. So this is my little hand stamped carved I mean hand carved stamp blah can't even speak today ended up making him some little stripes on his back just for more interest in trimming off a little bit more around the edges um, you could carve all the outside edges off you could have a square or a rectangle stamp and then just carve all that excess off but I just decided to cut it off and make the stamp the shape of the fish so then I'm using some green ink. This is a uh, leaf, I think, leaf green. Archival ink to stamp my fish, trying to get a good impression with my little quirky fish. And I'm going to make him odd colors because he's quirky. He's not the color of what fishes should be, but also taking into account that I'm using the red and green from the challenge. So I get out some Posca pins that um, this is fine tip Posca pin set that has I think eight or so colors including the white and black. So if you haven't ever purchased any Posca pins a good idea would be to buy them in the set 
and then you get your white and your black as well as a few colors to play with uh, primary bright colors mostly um, there's a pink bright blue dark blue red green uh, yellow you know that type of stuff so because posca pins are acrylic and they are opaque they go over the top of another color and you don't see the color shining through. With other type of markers, they are more translucent. It affects the color that you're getting, what you're coloring over the top of. But since this is a solid stamped image, I'm coloring over the green, but it's not, it's not muddying the color at all because that's a permanent ink. Archival ink is a permanent ink, so it's not running. And the markers are opaque, so they're just coloring right over the top. I decided to get out my dip pen again and play with it a little bit more by drawing around some illustration lines onto my fish as well. Just, you know, it's new, it's, it's something different, so I want to play with it a little bit. And I'm still using the same nib that I used before. And then it's, you know, a fine, it's got a fine point on it then I do end up changing in a little bit to try to get a wider line with a different nib. So this little guy gets cut out and glued on with some tacky glue. A little tip about tacky glue, you can put it on and then you can smear it with your finger and you'll get it all the way to the edge and it'll really give you a nice stuck down piece. But you do get glue on your fingers and then you have to peel it off. But if you like peeling things, then there you go. You can peel it. <laughs> I have glue on my fingers all the time, whether it's matte medium or tacky glue or something. I always constantly have to peel stuff off my fingers. I attempted to not get India ink on my hands. I was really trying hard, but I still managed to get India ink on my hands. So that'll be on there for a while. So one of the wild cards was graffiti. And so I decided to just write some words in my own handwriting. Um, you guys know I don't like my handwriting. I think it looks very terrible. And so I don't do it often, but since it was graffiti, it was, uh, you know, okay to have my terrible handwriting. I got a ink blob, which I had to fix. So this is when I'm trying to use a, a slightly larger, what I thought was a larger nib, but it's really just still very fine. So it doesn't show up very much on the background. I hope you're enjoying this video. If you are, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or a question below. Come and join Pick a Stick Challenge. The link is in the description box below. Just make sure that you answer the questions that are asked of you when you're um, applying to join so that we know you're a real person and not a robot and that you understand the rules of Pick a Stick Challenge. Um, yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. I think most of you have, I guess. <laughs> Got to the 10,000, woohoo! So just to make my words stand out a bit more, I decided to use my white Posca pen again and draw around the letters. So that was my finishing touch, was to draw around the letters. That does make them stand out a little bit more because they are very fine still. Um, Hopefully one of those nibs is a, is a fat line nib or something. Or maybe I can get a calligraphy one. Um, way back in the day, my mom used to do calligraphy. And she, she did it and um, sold it. You know, not she did some that she sold at craft fairs. And then she also, some people would ask her to do it for money. So she made a little money off of that. And I remember some of how to do calligraphy, so it might be kind of fun to get a calligraphy dip pen set as well and maybe see if that makes my letters look a little bit better. Anyway, that's it for me for Pick a Stick Challenge for the month of August 2018. And I guess all I have to say is goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>